So what is dictionary compression? Dictionary compression helps in situations like this one. So look at this table of colleagues. We have a primary key name and we have two attributes street and city. And notice that this table is in third normal form. It's actually also in boys quad normal form. Still, we have a lot of redundancy. If you see this here, this column, we have Mac Street, for example, appearing multiple times. We have this Long Street appearing only once. Uni Street appears multiple times. So you can argue there's a lot of redundancy. The same holds for cities. Saarbrücken appears here many, many times. New York appears many, many times and so forth. So what can we do about that? Well, the interesting question is how would the database system store those values, those individual values, how are they stored in the database? Is it like that, that every time a value is stored, the value is again stored? So every time the database wants to store Saarbrücken, it, it stores the characters representing Saarbrücken. Well, some database systems actually do it like that. So therefore you have to intervene here. You can do things about that. And a very efficient technique to fix that is called dictionary compression. So what do we do? We basically create another table. So let's call it cities dictionary. And here we collect all the cities that appear in the table. Those were only th three cities if you go back. So we only had Saarbrücken, New York, Cupertino. That's all that appeared. And what we do is we replace this table colleagues by another table called colleagues2 and change this attribute to collect foreign keys to this table here. So now these foreign keys city ID is pointing to the primary key city ID in this cities dictionary. And that is the effect that we now really force the database to just store the IDs here in this column. The database will not use strings or characters to represent the city. It will store some integer value, hopefully, if you picked an integer column. And, and of course, we define that as a foreign key to the cities dictionary. Here we only store each of the cities, the characters representing the city once. So this dictionary compression has the advantage that we store less data here. So especially for tables that contain many, many tuples, where we obviously don't reduce the number of tuples in the table, but this attribute here can use a different type. So rather than using a var char or a char 15 or something like that, we can now use an integer type. So using dictionary compression here has an advantage and a disadvantage. The advantage is this attribute here may use a different type. We may now use an integer type, which typically is smaller than a character, a string. Yeah, the street is way longer than the four byte integer we typically use. The disadvantage is that whenever we look up a specific tuple here and we are interested in the city, we have to join against the city's dictionary. Here's another join among those tables we introduced. So basically we split those tables into two tables. Before we had one table, colleagues, and now we split it. We basically remove those cities and split it into two tables colleagues to and the city's dictionary and we get back to the original table by joining the two tables of course. So we can do that for other attributes as well. So for the street attribute for example we, we can introduce another dictionary. This is called streets dictionary and it's the same pattern here. We have a primary key, the street ID and we have the actual streets and this is a foreign so the primary key here is used as, as a foreign key here in this new table, which is now called colleagues3. So again, the same advantage as before, similar advantage. This column is now less wide, so we can use an integer type to represent it. The drawback is whenever we're interested in the, the specific attribute value, we have to join this back to the original streets dictionary. So assume a situation where you're interested in, say, one specific tuple, this one, and you're interested in both values. So in this situation, you have to perform two joins. You have to join with this streets dictionary and with the city's dictionary. So that's the drawback. However, there's another advantage, and that is the database system can exploit this more effective, this more efficient representation for query processing. And basically, this is based on views. 
So let's look at what ha what's happening. Assume we have a query like that, a very simple query, selecting only the name from the table, just the name of those employees that live in Uni Street. Well, we kicked out Uni Street and represented it by this code here, Street ID three. So this one here. So we should get these results, these results. So those three tuples are part of the result. However, this where condition cannot be applied anymore here as we replaced the string uni street by three. So basically we can rewrite this query to something like this. You could say rather than taking colleagues as the input table, you take colleague three, that is a rewritten table here, dictionary compressed. However, then the condition has to change. We can't just filter on street equals uni street because these strings do not exist in table colleagues three. Here we have to use the string that is available in colleagues three, which is just this code, the street ID foreign key reference. So, which means we use here a subquery. So the subquery selects from our streets dictionary the street ID, which has the streets attribute equal to uni street. That is what we want. We want to have this mapping, this entry from this dictionary key to this value that's being compressed by dictionary compression. And that is exactly this, what we're interested in. So this will return a single scalar value. So let's look at the streets dictionary table. That's this one underneath. So we select this row here. And then from that row, we only project to the street ID attribute, which means this returns a single scalar attribute value, which is then used as a filter condition. So here we have this condition where street ID equals three. Again, we go to the colleagues three relation and those are those tuples we selected initially. Those three rows will be selected by that query. So we get the same result as in this query above. So if you are in this situation on your database and assume you created this on the schema level, you used three create table statements to create those tables, you can still hide that representation for the user by creating a view. You could say create view and then return the join over those three different tables. So as we learned in the undergrad lecture, there's a statement create view. So that, that can be used, of course, here again to create a view called colleagues. Yeah, get rid of the original physical table colleagues and replace it by a view. And the view, of course, and is a join over those three tables. And then users don't even have to see this stuff. You can hide this representation from users and the database system will do all the magic. So here's another example, another query write. Assume you want to do something like this, an aggregation. So first the grouping on city and then we do a count star, which means we want to have a count for every city appearing. How many colleagues live in a specific city? So again, we could rewrite that with a local view, something like that. Here we have the grouping condition, but it's on city ID rather than city. So let's take a look. How was that? We have a cities dictionary and it doesn't make a difference here whether we group on city ID or on city. It will return the same result. Logically, it's the same thing. So we group by city ID, return that as a grouping key, do a count star, rename it to C. And we do that on colleagues three rather than colleagues. And what happens here is basically we do the join again with the cities dictionary because we want to replace each and every city ID we get here. So the city IDs and the counts are returned here. So basically we get here something like, uh, so the result is something like city ID, it will be zero comma for New York. And then we do a count star. Let's do the query processing manually. One, two, three, four. And Cupertino will be returned one, two, and Saarbrücken, or the city ID for Saarbrücken will be returned one, two, three, four, five, six. So is that correct? Should be 12 tuples, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So that's the result that's gonna be returned by this one. 
And what we do here outside is we replace those IDs by the actual cities again to get back to the representation we wanted to have in the first place. So basically, all this dictionary compression can be expressed by views. The advantage for the database system is that it can operate on something that's way more efficient. Grouping on IDs is more efficient than grouping on characters, especially for large tables that do query processing on specific attributes, be it grouping or be it joins, it makes a lot of sense to replace those values by dictionaries. Once you're in that situation, once you converted this table to this representation, there's another concern, and that is what is the right type here for this specific attribute? Of course, you can use an integer, but depending on the specific database system, there's a, there are different options for the types to use. So let's assume we are not on the schema level anymore, we are really on the implementation level. And then we can think about what is the right type for something like that. Well, how many different values do we have? We have six different values from zero to five, and that can be represented by three bits. Three bits here are just enough because two to the power of three, of course, is eight different values. Two to the power of two would be four. That's slightly too small, but two to the power of three can represent all of that. So basically, for each entry here, three bits would be just fine. Three bits are required. And even if we add another value six and another value seven, it's still fine. Just when we add another value eight, then that would be nine different values. Then we have a problem. Then we would have to enlarge this domain. And the same holds for city idea or similar consideration holds here. So we have, so we have three different values, zero, one, and two. So here we only need two bits actually. Two bits are just fine. So two to the power of three, that was here. Now let's look at this one. This is two to the power of two would be four different values. So we need two bits to represent that. So this is a dramatic change over the original colleagues relation. Let's go back. So if you look back at this one, we see here, at this point I didn't define whether this is a watcher or is limited in any way. But if you assume this has on average like 10 characters, let's say each has one or two bytes, depending on whether it's UTF or not. So this is a lot of data. Let's say it's 10 bytes per value here. So in contrast, here we only have three bits. Here we have two bits. So this is five bits in total to represent both of them. This is less than a byte to represent the data. And that, of course, may have a huge impact on query processing, especially with respect to throughput on the memory bus or from disk to main memory if you want to load a lot of data if you load major portions of this column it makes a huge difference whether you have a bar chart representation or whether you have an encoded representation like this one so therefore if you do dictionary encoding if you do dictionary compression it makes also sense as a second thought to think about what is the right type for this column. And just as a footnote, as we call it domain encoding, you may also remember the statement create domain. Create domain. So that's offered in several database products, for example, Postgres. And we used that already in the undergrad lecture to create specific domains. And that's the same idea actually on the schema level. Here you create a specific domain in situations where you know you don't have too many values in that domain. Then you typically create such a domain, you list the values and then you split a table into two tables. So if you do something like that in SQL, this is not a dictionary. What you, what you create here is not a dictionary actually, it's called a domain. Then you define a specific attribute to be of that type of that domain. So rather than creating a separate table as a dictionary, we could have said, okay, we create a domain, a city's domain, and then we enlist the values that are allowed for that specific domain. Of course, this approach here has problems, especially if you create a city you have never seen before, then you would have to enlarge the domain. So domains typically only used if you know all the cities in advance. 
If you know you only store values of those three cities, then it's fine. But if this list is enriched, typically you don't use a domain. So this statement, this trading domains is heavily related to this concept. However, it's not exactly the same thing. So create domain for databases, of course, very useful to, to make a type more narrow, to be more precise, to have more constraints on a specific type. And this may even be a list of values that are allowed for that specific domain. So that's one way of using that. But the idea is somehow similar. So dictionaries and domains are super related. So basically, whenever you're in a situation like this one, you have three options. So what can you do in this situation? So option one is think about creating domains. So option two is you create dictionaries and then there's the option 2A actually, which means you create it on the schema level. And option B is you create it internally if you have the possibility to change the representation used by the database system. But let's assume we are really implementing the database system. You can do it on the physical level. So to sum up, what are the advantages of dictionary compression? String data is converted to numeric data. This has many, many advantages, storage space, but also query processing. One big advantage here is we can still access single rows. That's very, very handy. And additional compression methods may be applied. We will look at that in a follow-up video. This can then also be exploited for query processing. Disadvantages are savings depend on the number of duplicates divided over the number of entries. So what is the amount of duplicates here in relation to the number of entries in the table. If you don't have any duplicates at all, say in a key column, then this doesn't make too much sense. So dictionary compression kicks in if there are some duplicates. Attribute values occur over and over again in the same column, then this may be exploited. And of course, a drawback is you have extra joins to the dictionary. On the other hand, you may exploit some things for query processing. So usually, as in databases, as usual in databases, when you introduce a method, you not only gain something, you may also lose something, and you have to balance that and have to be careful when using the method. So the big advantage here is that we gain something for query processing due to multiple effects, due to smaller data, smaller attribute domains that can be used or query processing working on the compressed data that's possible. On the other hand, you may lose something and that is especially if you apply this method to columns that don't have enough duplicates, you may end up with in a situation where the dictionary plus the original table is bigger than the original table. That's not what you want to have. And in addition, you might end up having extra joints that also cost something. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.